Hey y'all in 4H and H here and that is Jeff W4DD RFI expert and he's uh, helping identify the poles that are problematic for me and there are many more than what the power company had originally thought. Now we've just used something we rode around the entire neighborhood in his truck using a software called uh, RFI Mapper and it's given us the areas to concentrate on. And then the parabolic dish there is using ultrasonic technology and you can pinpoint down to exactly which nut or bolt is arcing. And uh, this is just one of many poles. Uh, let me zoom in. You see that boot there? At one of the other poles, there's a, the arc is focused on that boot, but it's probably the clamp under the boot, of course. Now notice that bolt going through. See that lightning arrestor? See that bolt going through? That's another common noise point. Um, also staples. Yes, staples uh, that will hold like a ground wire and things like that. I know it looks pretty nasty up there, doesn't it? <laughs> but ironically, all the rat's nest of wires is not usually the problem in and of itself. It's, it's loose hardware allowing an arc to ground. Because remember, this high voltage always loves to go to ground. So uh, in this case, I don't know yet where, where the noise was coming from, but uh, Jeff was just aiming the dish to figure out exactly where. And now he's noting it. Well, the combination of the RFI mapper and then which pinpoints which poles and then the parabolic dish which pinpoint exactly what hardware on the pole then you can turn it over to the power company and now even if they don't understand RFI at least they know exactly where to focus their efforts on. Jeff where's the issue? Um, it's on the back side of the pole the staple about four feet from the top. Ah so it is a staple. Yep. So let me see if I can zoom in on that for y'all. Yep, I see it. So there's a, look up there, about four feet down from the top, you see the staples right there? Talking about the ones going over to the uh, lightning arrestor? Um, it's the one near that uh, guy line, where the guy line attaches. Oh yeah, 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 gotcha, right there. Okay, so see the guy wire? Yeah, that staple. Uh, so, yes. Is, by the way, transformer, it's never the transformer. Hams, please don't call your power company and say my transformer's noisy. It's not. It's the hardware. It's almost always a dirty insulator. We got one, we caught one that's a dirty insulator already. Um, staples, uh, you know, loose, uh, loose bolts, hardware's like you see that. Um, let me go back around the other side. So I'll, I'll zoom in back up there where I told you to look for that boot. Right above the light, you see the transformer, see that boot, that rubber boot over the insulator going down into the transformer. Now look right up above it and see that bolt sticking out. Let me forward the camera there. Let me get this over to this side. There, you see that bolt right there at the center of the screen sticking out in that nut. And then there's, there, there's the bolts coming through from the lightning arrestor. That is a a known culprit that needs to be checked. It might actually be a clamp. I think there's a clamp on that line. You want to take a scan with the dish or you Okay, yeah, I'm going to go use the dish a minute, guys. I'll be back. Okay, y'all, I'm going to insert this into the video. That's the Yagi that was connected to a, a Yaesu VX, it was VX5R? Uh, uh, yes. HT that was tuned to 136 megahertz, and that's uh, how we were able to find out which pole, not necessarily which hardware, but which pole. And then the, the parabolic dish there with the ultrasonic technology narrows down to exactly which piece of hardware is causing the noise. But it's a Yagi that Jeff made, what, 15 years ago? At least. So uh, you can see it's three elements. Um, and as a, uh, let me zoom in on that. You can see the hairpin match right there. A lot of people think, oh, that's a dead short. Well, no, it's a, it's a hairpin match. <laughs> this is a different pole, so let me show you a point of reference. Back there is the pole I was just showing you. This one here, RFI mapper was, I think, registering 11 dB or more from this one. And you see it's got the proverbial boot there now. The boot in and of itself is probably not an issue. It's the clamp under it. 
But there again, you see the lightning arresters to the right, the bolt going through, that's usually an area of noise. But this one's also got old style insulators. So those can be problematic. They get dirty. And again, don't forget the staples. The staples that go to up and down the pole. So the reason we're checking this one with the parabolic is because, you know, the we rode by, we were using our Yagi on the, in the AM portion of the aircraft, you know, air, aircraft band, AM, 136 megahertz. And that pin, the Yagi antenna pinpointed this pole. And then um, the RFI mapper pinpointed this pole. And now the parabolic dish can pinpoint exactly which piece of hardware it is. What do you think, Jeff? Quiet. It's quiet? So, so was that pole there <clears throat> and these overhead lines are white? Oh, that's it's why we were hearing it. Yeah. So guys, <laughs> see that? See the lines going from pole to pole? So they were probably acting like an antenna. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. They were. So we thought it was this pole, but it was actually that pole. So that's number four we have to... Uh, so guys, just, just for the record though, Jeff's one of us. Jeff's a ham. Uh, tell us a little bit about you, Jeff. Uh, I've been a ham longer than I can remember, maybe 40 or 50 years. I uh, grew up in Michigan, lived in Virginia, now live in Georgia. I worked for Verizon for a lot of years uh, in the RF and uh, technology group and got interested in RFI. I'm retired now, and uh, when the occasion calls, I get involved with RFI cases, trying to document them and get some action on them. So if you're not in Georgia, I'm sorry you don't have a Jeff. <laughs> Maybe, well, for, a, for a price, they could, they could fly you somewhere. I've been to Mississippi for a friend of mine, uh, okay. actually. Okay, you have, okay. So, so you know, you guys know from the from my channel that for the last two years I've been fighting this RFI, and the power company has been difficult to get them out here, and when they did come out here, it didn't really fix anything. So, Jeff's pinpointing, you took 1,700 data points with RFI Mapper. Correct. So we drove around the entire neighborhood, every cul-de-sac, and even the next neighborhood's over. With RFI Mapper, it's a software technology to, uh, receiving from his HF rig using a Kenwood 690. And it actually vocalizes the, uh, the decibel level of the uh, noise every time it takes a data point. So we have 1,700 data points literally on a map of the area. And now he's even pinpointed it down to exactly which hardware. So when he does get the power company out here, which he'll, he's got some contacts, he'll try to work that angle. They'll know exactly what they need to do rather than a shot in the dark. So that's the approach here. It's a, uh, a methodical targeted approach. So you don't waste the power company's time. But again, don't call your power company and tell them you got a noisy transformer. It's almost always these things I'm showing you here in the video. I uh, hope you found that helpful, and uh, hopefully you're in an area where your power company is very responsive to these types of requests. But, you know, be nice. Don't complain. Don't be an irritant. That's not going to get you anywhere. Just, uh, it, it, you know, let them know that you're struggling with it. All right, hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. This is N4H&H. And Jeff, W4DD. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any level you can help though. There are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. You can vote, as they say, vote with your wallet to help offset the cost of doing this. To join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. If you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing and you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third. And also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend.